A Brief Life Scant of Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur The crown jewel of Sri Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharyas and the highly exalted preceptor Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur is the author of the famous Sar Ardhavarshini commentary on Srimad Bhagavad Gita. He has appeared in a family of Brahmanas from the Radhiya community of the Nadia district in West Bengal. He was celebrated by the name Hari Vallabha and he had two older brothers, Ramabhadra and Raghunath. During his childhood, he completed his study of grammar in Devakrama village. He then studied devotional scripture at the home of his spiritual master in the Saita Bada village of the Murshidabad district. While living in Shayadabad, he wrote Bhakti Ras Amrita Sindhu Bindu, Ujjvala Nilamani Kirana and Bhagavat Amrita Kana. Soon after, he renounced household life and went to Rindavana, where he wrote many other books and commentaries. In this commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam, named Sar Arda Darshini, Srila Vishwanath Jagavarti Thakur has written the following verse at the beginning of the fifth chapters describing Sri Krishna's Rasa dance. Sri Rasa Panchat Yai Sri Rama Krishna Ganga Charanan Natva Guru Nuru Premanaha Srila Narutam Nata Sri Gauranga Prabhum Naomi the name Sri Rama refers to Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's spiritual master, Sri Radha Ramana. Krishna refers to his grand spiritual master, Sri Krishna Charana. Ganga Charana refers to his great grand spiritual master, Sri Ganga Charana. Narutam refers to his great great grand spiritual master, Srila Narutam Das Thakur, and the word Nata refers to Srila Narutam Thakur's spiritual master, Sri Lokanath Goswami. In this way, he offers obeisances to all those in his disciplic succession upon to Sriman Mahaprabhu. Distinguished service to the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. In his old age, Srila Vishwanath Jagavarti Thakur spent most of his time in a semi-conscious or internal state, deeply absorbed in bhajan. During that time, a debate broke out in Jaipur between the Gaudiya Vaishnavas and Vaishnavas who supported the doctrine of Svakya Vad, or the Lord's pastimes of wedded love. The Vaishnavas from the antagonistic camp of the Sri Ramanuja line had led King Jaya Singh III of Jaipur to believe that the worship of Srimati Radhika with Sri Govinda Deva is not supported by the scriptures. Their connection was that Srimati Radhika's name is neither mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam nor in the Vishnu Purana and that she was never married to Sri Krishna according to Vedic ritual. The antagonistic Vaishnavas further objected that the Gaudiya Vaishnavas did not belong to a recognized Sampradaya or line of the civic succession. From time immemorial there have been four Vaishnava Sampradayas, the Sri Sampradaya, the Brahma Sampradaya, the Rudra Sampradaya and the Sanaka Kumara Sampradaya. In this age of Kali, the principal Acharyas of these four Sampradayas are respectively Sri Ramanuja, Sri Madhva, Sri Vishnu Swami and Sri Nimbaditya. The Ramanuja Vaishnavas said, that Gaudiya Vaishnavas were outside these four Sampradayas and therefore without pure lineage.
Further, they argued that because Gaudiya Vaishnavas did not have their own commentary on Brahma Sutra, also known as Vedanta Sutra, they could not be following a genuine Vaishnava disciplic succession. Maharaja Jai Singh knew that the prominent Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharyas of Vrindavan were followers of Srila Rupa Goswami, and he summoned them to Jaipur to take up the challenge of the Sri Ramanuja Vaishnavas. The elderly Srila Chakravarti Thakur was fully absorbed in the transcendental bliss of Bhajan, so he sent his student Srila Baladeva Vidyabhushana to address the Jaipur assembly. Gaudiya Vaishnava Vedanta Acharya Sri Baladeva Vidyabhushana, the crown of the assembly of learned scholars and the greatest among exalted teachers of Vedanta, left for Jaipur, accompanied by Srila Chakavarti Thakur's disciple Sri Krishna Deva. The caste Goswamis had forgotten their own connection with the Madhva Sampradaya, disrespected the Gaudiya Vaishnavas' doctrinal view, saying it has no connection with Vedanta. This caused considerable disturbance to the true Gaudiya Vaishnavas. But Srila Baladeva Vidyabhushana used irrefutable logic combined with powerful scriptural evidence to prove that the Gaudiya Sampradaya is a pure Vaishnava Sampradaya, called the Sri Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya, coming in the line of Sri Madhva Ajarya. Srila Jiva Goswami, Srila Kavikarnapurna and other previous Acharyas also accepted this as fact. The Gaudiya Vaishnavas accept Srimad Bhagavatam as the genuine commentary on Vedanta Sutra. For this reason, no one in the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya had written a separate commentary on Vedanta Sutra. The name of Srimati Radhika, the personification of the pleasure-giving potency Ladini Shakti, and the eternal beloved of Sri Krishna, is mentioned in various Puranas. Throughout Srimad Bhagavatam, particularly the tenth canto, in connection with the description of the Lord's Vrindavan pastimes, Srimati Radhika is referred to indirectly and discreetly. Only Rasika and Bhavuka devotees conversant with the conclusions of Scripture can understand this confidential mystery. In the learned assembly in Jaipur, Srila Baladeva Vidyabhushana refuted the arguments and doubts of the opposing party and they were silenced by his presentation. He establishes that the Gaudiya Vaishnavas are in the disciplic succession from Sri Madhva Acharya. Despite his victory, however, the contesting party did not accept the Gaudiya Sampradaya to be a pure Vaishnava lineage, because the Gaudiyas had no commentary on Vedanta Sutra. Srila Baladeva Vidyabhushana therefore composed the famous Gaudiya commentary, Sri Govinda Bhashya. Once again, the worship of Sri Sri Radha Govinda commenced in the temple of Sri Govinda Deva and the validity of the Sri Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya was firmly established. It was only on the authority of Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur that Sri Baladeva Vidyabhushana was able to write Sri Govinda Bhashya and prove the connection of Gaudiya Vaishnavas with the Madhva Sampradaya. There should be no doubt in this regard. This accomplishment of Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur performed on behalf of the Sampradaya will be recorded on golden script 
in the history of Gaudia Vaishnavism. Re-establishing the doctrine of Parakya. When a slight decline in the influence of the six Goswamis took place in Sri Vrindavan, a controversy arose around the doctrines of wedded love, Svakiyavad, versus paramortal love, Parakiyavad. To dispel the misconceptions regarding Svakiyavad, Srila Chakravarti Thakur wrote Raghavartma Chandrika and Gopi Brahm Amrita, both of which are replete with scriptural philosophical conclusions. Thereafter, in his Ananda Chandrika commentary on the verse Lagudva Atrayat Proktam of Sri Ujvala Nilamani 1.21, he showed that the theory of Svakiyavad was fallacious and he established the conception of parakia with scriptural evidence and irrefutable arguments. Further, in his Sarardadarshini commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam, he gave strong support to parakia bhav. Certain scholars opposed the conclusions of Srila Chakravarti Thakur on worship in the mood of Parakya. When he defeated them with superior eruditation and sound reasoning, they resolved out of envy to kill him. They knew that Sri Chakravarti Thakur used to circumambulate Sri Vrindavan early each morning. So they hide in a dark, dense grove and waited for him to walk by. As his adversaries watched him approach, he suddenly disappeared, and in his place a beautiful young girl of Raja appeared, picking flowers with some of her friends. The scholars asked the girl, Dear child, just a moment ago a great devotee was coming this way. Did you see where he went? The girl replied that she had seen him, but that she did not know where he had gone. Her astonishing beauty, gentle smile, graceful manner and sidelong glances captivated the scholars. Their hearts melted and all the impurities in their minds were vanquished. They asked the girl who she was, and she replied, I am a maidservant of Srimati Radhika. She is presently at her in-law's house at Yavat, and she sent me here to pick flowers. Having spoken thus, the girl disappeared, and in her place the scholars saw Srila Chakravart Thakur once again. They fell at his feet and prayed for forgiveness, and he forgave them all. There are many such astonishing occurrences in the life of Srila Chakravarti Thakur. In this way, Srila Chakravarti Thakur refuted the theory of Svakya and established the truth of pure Parakya an achievement of a great import for the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur not only protected the integrity of the Sri Gaudiya Vaishnava Dharma, but he also re-established its influence in Sri Vrindavan. Anyone who evaluates this accomplishment will be struck with wonder at his uncommon genius. Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharyas have composed the following verse in praise of his extraordinary work. Vishvasyanata Rupusto Bhakti Vartma Pradarshanat Bhakta Chakra Vartitatvat Chakravarti Agyaya Bhavat 
He is known by the name Vishwanath, Lord of the Universe, because he indicates the path of Bhakti. And he is known as Chakravarti, or he around whom the circle or assembly turns, because he always remains within the assembly chakra of pure devotees. Therefore, his name is Vishwanath Chakravarti. In about 1754, on the fifth day of the light phase of the moon, in the month of Magha, January, February, when Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur was around 100 years old, he left this material world in Vrindavan, deeply absorbed in internal consciousness. His samadhi stands today next to the temple of Sri Sri Radha Gokulananda in Sri Dham Vrindavan. Below is a list of his books, commentaries, prayers, which comprise a storehouse of incomparable wealth of Gaudiya Vaishnava devotional literature. The present Hindi edition of Bhagavad Gita includes the following features. The original Devanagari verse, the transliteration, the Anvaya, word for word, the verse translation, Srila Chakravarti Thakur's Sarartavarshini commentary, its Bhav Anuvad, a translation that takes into consideration specific subtleties, and the Sarartavarshini Prakashika Riti, which has been written by this poor and lowly servant. The Sarartavarshini commentary is not simple or easy to understand unless one has some knowledge of Sanskrit. I have written Sar Ardavarshini Prakashika Riti in line with the thoughts of the Sri Rupanuga Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharyas in order to make Srila Chakavarti Thakur's Sar Ardavarshini commentary simpler and easier to understand. May the merciful readers forgive me for my impudent act. My worshipful god-brother, Pari Vrajak Acharya, Sri Srimad Bhaktivedanta Vamana Maharaj, is the present Acharya and president of Sri Gaudi Vedanta Samiti, and he is a dear and intimate servant of Sri Guru Pada Padma. He is very attached to the topmost knowledge, Bhakti. By his mercy, he has repeatedly encouraged and directed this worthless servant to fulfill the innermost intentions of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's associates by publishing a natural, easy and comprehensive edition of Srimad Bhagavad Gita, along with the commentaries of Srila Chakravarti Thakur. I humbly pray at his lotus feet that he bestow his blessings upon me. In this way I may fulfill Srila Guru Deva's inner desire, offering this Srimad Bhagavad Gita, which includes his dear Sar Ardavarshini commentary, into his lotus hands. I am specifically indebted to Astoda Sada Sri Srimad Bhakti Viveka Bharati Maharaja and Astoda Sada Sri Srimad Bhakti Sri Rupa Siddhanti Maharaja. Both were surrendered at the lotus feet of Nitya Lila Pravishta Jagat Guru Astoda Sada Sri Srimad Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada. And they have benefited the world unlimitedly by translating and publishing a Bengali edition of Srila Chakravarti Thakur's commentary and the Rasik Ranjana Bhashya of the seventh Goswami, Srila Bhaktivinod Thakur. I have systematically studied this edition 
and have quoted some portions from it herein. I offer my prostrated obeisances at the lotus feet of these two shikshagurus of mine, time and again. May they be pleased with me. I am completely confident that readers who are hankering for bhakti will receive this book well and with all honor and that faithful readers will enter into the realm of Shuddha Bhakti after studying it. We hope that our spiritually astute readers will mercifully forgive any mistakes and discrepancies that may have occurred in the course of compiling this book in a short time and that they will oblige us by accepting its very essence. Finally, in a mood of distress, I pray at the lotus feet of my most worshipful Sri Guru Padapadma, Nityalila Purvishta Om Vishnupada Astoda Sada Sri Srimad Bhakti Brakyan Keshava Goswami Maharaja, who is the concentrated embodiment of Bhagavan's compassion. May he shower profuse mercy and blessings upon me, so that this poor, lowly servant will attain increasing qualification to serve his innermost desire. Praying for a particle of the mercy of Sri Hari, Guru and Vaishnavas, the humble and insignificant Sri Dandibhikshu, Sri Bhaktivedanta Narayana, Sri Keshavaji Gaudiamat Mathura Yas Puja of Sri Sri Guru Pada Padma, 25th February 1997.